Well, we're live, everyone. Uh, thanks if you joined us yet. We're going to wait a few seconds for people to uh, join the webinar and then we'll get started into, into the content. Hope you're doing well. Nice, beautiful, sunny day outside. And uh, eager to uh, share some good news with you guys. The, uh, the webinars are all recorded as well. So uh, for those watching at home, welcome. Um, and I uh, hope you enjoy our presentation today. So this is topic uh, webinar 20, or webinar topic 20, uh, the update to the deposit use of the 25K Home Builder Grant and also other lending improvements with the banks. Um, our names are Doug and Todd from the Property and Finance team. And um, we've got some really positive news to share with you today that can potentially help you get into your next home sooner. So we're here for the next 10 minutes. Uh, we're happy to stick around at the end if there are any questions and uh, we can discuss anything that might come up. All right. So today we're going to be covering three main areas. Number one, the first one is regarding uh, the new banking rules that are improving borrowing capacity amounts. Number two, we'll next talk about the how selected banks are using the 25K Home Builder Grant as part of your deposit. And lastly, we'll cover the option of using how you can get to your first home with no deposit. All right, so let's get started. Yep, fantastic. Okay, so basically what we've started to see over the last week, week and a half, is that a lot of the banks are now transitioning uh, into a sort of post-COVID uh, policy, which is pretty much what they had in policy pre-COVID. So we've gone through this position of having good lending policies where they're looking to uh, send out credit to, to clients, then they've had to retract a lot of those policies uh, during COVID. They now want, uh, got some good modelling to see uh, how COVID's going to impact their, their bottom line. And are pretty comfortable where they are at this stage um, and, and starting to see policies return to where they were sort of six, seven months ago. So, so what, what is actually happening? So what we're seeing is lenders are coming out and said their base rates are decreasing. What the base rate means for, for us when we're doing our modelling and, and calculating how much you can borrow, it's the actual interest rate that the banks use to determine how much they're willing to lend you. So right now, give or take, owner-occupied rates are sort of in the high 2%, 2.7, 2.8. Uh, but in their calculators, they use a figure of 5, 6, 7%, depending on the lender. So we've seen uh, lenders come out and, and those rates are reduced into the fives, mid fives, and even into the lower 5%. So, that, so that's a positive step in that they're looking to reduce that figure to be able to uh, lend out more money to more clients. Uh, we've seen a, a change in the, the percentage use of rental income. So generally, historically, most lenders have used 80%, so to allow for other, other expenses, such as maintenance or um, property management fees. That reduced to 70% and even 60%, um, even further if you've got a holiday home. But we've now seen that, or are seeing that return back up to that 80% threshold. So again, allowing more income to be used in their calculators to determine how much they can, they can lend you. The return to higher loan to value ratios, or LBRs, what that basically means is uh, less deposit required for clients to get into their first homes. So what we've seen is, Across the board, most lenders reduce their self-employment. So if you were self-employed, you needed a minimum of 20% deposit. And that takes us way back to the pre-GFC days where self-employed clients were reviewed as high risk and therefore required more deposit. Uh, but now we're seeing um, back, we're back up to sort of five and 10% deposits for self-employed clients, uh, depending on your, um, your industry or your profession that may or may not include mortgage insurance. But again, we have that conversation with you direct and to confirm what best suits your individual circumstances. And then also another uh, part that's contributing is refinance rebates. So for the majority of our clients, we've, you know, we've already got the, the, the correct structure and the, and the right banking policies to help you leverage into that next deal or you know, continue on your finance, uh, your wealth creation and finance journey. For our newer clients who may be coming to us with an existing home loan, you know, we'd be wanting to look at getting you into the right banking policy with the right loan structure in the, 
to enable you to, to take those next steps much easier. So we've seen the, the reintroduction of, of uh, lenders offering rebates anywhere between two to four thousand dollars. So again, lender specific, um, I don't know how much you borrow, how much deposit you've got, how much equity you've got in the property, things like that. There are a couple of variables there, but that banks are realizing now's a great opportunity for them to regain some market share. And those refinance rebates are going to cover things like uh, get out fees, uh, fixed rate termination fees to help you make that transition nice and easy. So at the end of the day, what does this mean to you? Generally speaking, all these things combined, you know, little sticks make big fire. So these things combined are helping you, our clients, to get a little bit more money to, to borrow a little bit more. And that could be the difference between getting into a property now or having to wait you know, further to, to get more deposit. Or it could mean getting into a the next tier of property or the, or the better property or the more stacked up property, whether that's investment to, to get a better return on your new investment property. Or, or buying in a, a new home in a, a maybe slightly more desirable location. So it's all positive news on the, on the, on the banking front. All right, so for the home builder, uh, so this is only very recently developed, um, the $25,000 being able to be used as part of the deposit. Um, so we've got that for first home buyers, of course, there's still the first home buyers grant. And there's a few other concessions and um, safe schemes as well that can help people uh, get into property. So in terms of uh, who is able to access these ones, the grants um, for the home builder are dependent on your income. So there's an income means test that um, basically get the grants of the people that are needing it the, the most. And for a single applicant, the amount is about 120,000. Uh, if you're applying with your partner, then you're able to go up to a 200,000. Uh, 200, um, and that is based off your taxable income as well. So come have a chat to us about that because we can see if you're eligible to, to get that $25,000. Um, of course, that is for building a new home, um, not just buying something that is established. But so there's a few other bits and pieces that's required from the Home Builder Grants perspective. But um, we can walk you through all the different uh, requirements and make sure that you're going to be lined up for that. Um, if it is your first home, the value is under, under 750000 and the first homeowner's grant um, will be there for you. So in total, $40,000, as we've mentioned last time, up for grabs to be able to use uh, towards your uh, new home. And that's really fantastic news because that is tax-free. It's um, not every day that you're able to get access to 40 k and uh, put that towards an asset that's going to grow and become a really important part of your property portfolio. And also um, the $25,000 grant is available for significant renovations to your own occupier. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's uh, over 150000 but for, for a new renovation contract. But the Doug and the property team can, can walk you through that in a bit more detail when you give us a call. That's right. And you know, when will all this be able to happen? Well, different banks are allowing the, the grant to be used as a deposit in different ways. For example, one bank allows you to use the grant providing you come up with a 10% deposit. Another bank is gonna allow you to just have a 5% deposit, but they're gonna need, the, need that split between both the land and the build contracts as well. So it's really important that you come have a chat with us because there are different options that might work better for you than others. And uh, because we have access to you know, different options, we're going to be able to structure the one that's going to sue you the most for what we can see. So let's have a chat on that one. There's still time before the end of the year. That is one of the biggest requirements. The, the contracts do need to be signed by December. And there's still options available out there. It is a busy property market at the moment. And it's certainly a lot of activity. And certainly probably more to come with, uh, with interest from interstate buyers uh, post-COVID. But um, the biggest thing is that we have access to it. It's just a matter of how we can make this work for you. And also, I think, you know, with, with the introduction of these grants um, and, and specific lending policies, as Doug touched on, you know, different lenders will allow the use of these grants at different stages. So we just need to confirm what's going to suit you best. But we do have access to policies in conjunction with the grants that can get you into either a new home or your first home pretty close to having little to no deposit. 
Um, so, you know, as an example, we've, we've touched on before, you know, added for a $550,000 house and land package, you know, to give you an idea of, of a very generalised uh, ballpark figure, you know, if we we're going to buy land for two eighty five and, and construct on it for two sixty five, so total five hundred fifty thousand um, dollars, you know, with a five percent deposit, um, you know, this would be tailored towards our medico clients or our junior medico clients, where they're not uh, required to pay um, lenders mortgage insurance. So that's you know, that, that, that's a, a significant thousands of dollars saving there. But deposit-wise, we need uh, you know, $27,500 for, uh, for a deposit. $5,000 should go close to covering your legal costs. So total deposit is $32,500 to get into something uh, of a $550,000 house and land package. As you can see on the right-hand side, you know, if you look at the $15,000 first homeowner's grant plus the $25,000 uh, home builder grant, you know, there's a total of forty thousand dollars, and as Doug said, you know that, that's tax free that you can utilise to, to cover the deposits to get into the property. So, so there are a number of lenders that will, will determine when we when we can and can't use those. But across the board, we've got a, a variety of options that we can. We're pretty confident that we can work with you guys to uh, to come up with a timeline of, of getting into that first home. So, in a nutshell, that, that's pretty much us for today. Um, unless anyone's got any questions, Doug, if you want to finish off. Yeah, definitely, guys. I think the, the biggest thing is that there are all these options available. The lending is getting better. It is a busy market. So, I think now is the time really to, to get serious about your next movement with property. And uh, you want to make sure that it's a planned approach with, it, with the right strategy in place. So, that's what we're all about here at WealthMed. We're not about just doing stuff willy-nilly. We want to make sure it's a, a planned and researched approach and making sure that it's putting you in a good situation going forward and also allowing you to do other stuff later down the track, which is sometimes uh, what the banks might ignore when uh, helping you out with a first loan. So come chat with us about this. Uh, of course, the first uh, meeting with us as a new client is free and uh, we can discuss how we can work best together. Uh, for those of us who are our existing clients, where you get to, to, to meet you guys again and then see where you're at and what uh, your plans are going forward. So I'll just quickly um, finish sharing the screen and uh, check in and see if you have any questions. But now is the time to be doing questions. So happy to take them now. Otherwise, please email us. We've got doug at wealthmed.com.au and todd at wealthmed.com.au. Check us out on our website, wealthmed.com.au, and we've got Facebook, or come by the office. You, you guys know where I just office at school. Hope you're having a great day, guys. We'll wrap up for today, but it's been a pleasure, as always. And um, we will see you guys next at uh, the next webinar. Fantastic. Thank you.